Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this afternoon's conversation with uh, Larry Burke, the owner and CEO of Outside Magazine, and also the, the lead sponsor for the second annual Bike and Brew uh, here in Santa Fe. And of course, uh, Outside being a, such a, a strong uh, global brand uh, for many outdoor enthusiasts, it's great to uh, have Outside Magazine here in, in Santa Fe. Uh, but also be a sponsor of this incredible event. This year we anticipate that more than 10,000 uh, people will participate in the Bike and Brew, uh, which means that people will get to uh, experience uh, fine, high-quality micro beer and enjoy more than 300 miles of trails, bike trails, both in the city uh, and in uh, the county. So it's going to be a great weekend. Larry, uh, thanks for spending some time with me today in the rail yard. Uh, right next to your office absolutely so um, you know, I think to get started I, I uh, I'd like people to know the story of outside magazine and, and really when they uh, when they when they see outside many of them will, will, will go to their local newsstand and pick it up or they'll see it in an airport and and they'll pick it up but uh, I don't think a lot of people know just how many countries you're in and certainly um, uh, how many uh, uh, publications you do on a monthly basis uh, well, thank you for being here, Mr. Sure. Mayor. Um, uh, thank you for allowing me to join you be, to be here. Um, outside, you know, it, we're, we're almost uh, 40 years old right now, and uh, I moved the company to Santa Fe 20 years ago. Uh, and since then, we have expanded uh, into a lot of other fields. The uh, Internet wasn't even something we all thought about uh, when we first moved here. And our online business uh, has really blossomed since moving to Santa Fe. We've got a lot of young people right over here in the rail yard, as Javier was saying. And, and um, uh, they've all come uh, to pursue uh, an active outside lifestyle as well as, to work for outs as well as to work for outside. So it's been really rewarding in that sense. Outside, um, uh, not many people know what our you know, total audiences, but uh, we have over two and a half million people reading outside every month. Uh, we have millions more uh, every day going to outside online. Uh, outside television now is in 40 million homes. Of course, we can see it right here in Santa Fe if you have Comcast or, or Dish uh, as your provider. Uh, we just started a company called Outside Go, which is an adventure travel company headquartered in our, in our building here in the rail yard. Uh, and uh, we offer in incredible trips all over the world, uh, doing a lot of very custom uh, things for our, our clients uh, in that regard. Um, and we just started a, a new company called Outside Media Productions, which uh, we're now doing uh, video production for many of our advertising clients. Outside is also uh, has a presence in China, in Brazil, in Scandinavia, in Argentina, in Chile, uh, and we're working with um, some groups in Australia and New Zealand as well as um, uh, Germany right now to uh, start outside there. So it's really, um, it's really been a great experience. We haven't uh, uh, skipped a beat since uh, we moved here 20 years ago, which was a little scary because we were in Chicago before. And, uh, you know, it was a big city, a huge labor market, uh, kind of, a, you know, one of the media uh, capitals in the country. And, um, you know, when we decided to pick up and move to beautiful New Mexico, um, we really didn't know what was in store for us. We, we just kind of took a chance. and. Uh, you know, personally, uh, as I've talked to you many times before, Javier, it was um, an emotional, sure. it was a, a very passionate and emotional decision uh, on my part. I just loved it when I first came here to Santa Fe. In fact, it only took me 36 hours to make the decision once I came here, and I'd never been here before. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, that says a lot, I think, about um, what the state and the city has to offer. Yeah. I'm Tim Fowler, and I am past president and current club ambassador for the Santa Fe Fat Tire Society. Uh, where it is now is a very good place. Uh, the cycling in Santa Fe is, uh, is improving in part due to a lot of uh, efforts by the club, and in part, I think, just people recognizing that it's a great way to recreate and a great way to get around town.
I've been in Santa Fe since 1997, and I have to say that in the years that I've lived here, cycling uh, has become much more common, much more welcome, and much more enjoyable here. We're building a whole lot of trails and, and maintaining the ones that we already have. Uh, the club just recently finished a flow trail, and the easiest way to describe a flow trail is it's a dirt roller coaster for bikes. And it, that trail is a mile long, it's in the La Tierra Trail System, and we just named it Hustle and Flow. Uh, Santa Fe Fat Tire Society just uh, one in uh, coordination with the city, the county, and a lot of other uh, help, uh, recognition as a silver ride center with the International Mountain Bicycling Association. And uh, there are approximately 10 other uh, silver level ride centers in the world, and that includes places like uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and there's only one other, uh, one gold ride center, and that's Park City, Utah. So we know that we have a lot of work to do to get to a gold ride center status, and things like the Flow Trail, which is a bicycle-specific trail, that kind of infrastructure, that kind of recreational resource is what is required to uh, get to that next level. It's recognition. It's recognition in uh, the international a, a mountain biking community that this is a really great place to go and ride. Uh, we of course have the La Tierra and Dale Ball trails. Uh, we have uh, a lot of trails in the National Forest like the Windsor, uh, Chamisa, uh, Borrego and Barawala that uh, have been around for years and that uh, the club and other trail uh, building and maintenance organizations are working to maintain and improve and uh, we, we just have those great resources that we're trying to build on. Well, my great hope for the uh, outdoor scene in Santa Fe is something that's called the Grand Unified Trail System. We have trails, like I mentioned, uh, on uh, one side of town, the Dale Ball System. We have tra uh, trails on the other side of town called La Tierra, and other disparate, disconnected trail systems around town. Uh, my goal and uh, the, what I'm working toward is to connect those trails with natural surface, what we call single track uh, trails that are accessible to cyclists, to uh, hikers, bikers, walkers, uh, and equestrians. And we're, we are getting rolling at what we're calling the guts plan to make that a reality. Well, we're glad you're here. Obviously, uh, uh, after that 36 hours, you instantly became part of the Santa Fe family, you and Gabe, and uh, for all that, uh, all the time that you've been here uh, in the outside employees, we know you're a part of this community in, in many ways outside of uh, what happens uh, in the outside magazine building next door to us. But, you know, you're, what I admire about you is you're a CEO that actually uh, lives the kind of life that um, your magazine promotes, which is uh, spending time challenging yourself uh, in the multitudes of outdoor activities. Tell us a little bit about your own uh, personal outside experiences that you enjoy doing here in, in New Mexico and then, and then other things that you personally like to do, uh, you know, outside of the state. Sure. Uh, well, I've, I've at one time or another probably done everything we cover, almost at least. I haven't, uh, I haven't, um, I haven't been much into into uh, skydiving, but uh, just about everything else. I mean, I've my wife and I have climbed. We've whitewater kayaked. Uh, of course, uh, we love to ski. Uh, I've been sailing most of my life. Uh, hiking, mountain biking here in Santa Fe has been a you know real a real passion of mine. Uh, obviously, uh, I guess that's one of the reasons why outside um, wanted to be involved with the outside bike and brew, which is right behind us right now, I guess, going on. Uh, and uh, that's why we have a few brews right. here. Uh, so, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a constantly evolving thing. I, I mean, as soon as a new sport or activity, uh, you know, outside is spun off from a core activity, I have to, I have to try it myself right. just to just to see how much I'll, I'll like it or not like it or whatever. So uh, right now I'm about to go to a surf camp down in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, looking forward to that. Decided I uh, ought to get serious about surfing. 
Not that that's something you can do in New Mexico, but you know, there's so much to do here that part of my challenge is just is just getting myself to leave New Mexico. Sure. Well, you know, uh, the outdoors um, such a broad market, and and obviously your editors need to decide the type of content to put into the magazine on a on a monthly basis. And what I find in the in the magazine that it's it's relevant to everybody. You don't have to be uh, this. Um, ace mountain biker out there or or this incredible sailor uh to only read the magazine you can you can be looking at ways to how to jump start your your healthy lifestyle and and there's something there in the magazine how do you how do you fit it all in so that the magazine just doesn't focus to a specific uh demographic but really you know if you haven't spent much time in the outdoors yeah. you could pick up the magazine and there's something in there for you yeah well that's a challenge i mean it's a challenge every day it's part of uh you know the um creative uh, dynamic that you look for when you're uh, bringing new editors on board. Uh, it's a culture that you want to pass down from uh, editor to editor as you, you know, move through the decades and so forth. But we've, we've learned pretty much how to balance the content, uh, both in terms of the activities, the seasonality, our attention to the planet Earth environmentally, um, and travel is a huge part of our of our uh, three pillars, as we like to say. So, you know, travel's a, 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 well, usually people have to travel to do what they want to do if it relates to the world outside anyway. So uh, that is by necessity a, a huge area of content for us. And it works very nicely in, in, in attracting people uh, to um, the natural resources that New Mexico has to offer. Right. Because, you know, we're in contact with uh, our audience 24-7 through the internet. We message them all the time on opportunities of things they might want to do. Right. Uh, so the editors have to have to really figure out how to balance it. And we don't, we'll never really be able to find enough space uh, uh, to cover it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is a matter of selection, mm -hmm. and natural selection maybe. Right. Right, right. And, uh, uh, but we're trying, you know. I mean, there's so many things to do um, that it's really hard to cover it all. Yeah, I think the only way to do it is to experience the magazine, right? So if That's you haven't right. seen it, pick it up and, That's right. and, and check it out. Steve Burns Chavez, I'm a landscape architect at the National Park Service. National Trails Office, headquartered here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yeah, great question. So the secret's about to get out of the bag here. Uh, we administer nine National Historic Trails out of our office, and three of them begin or end, depending on which way you're going, right here in the plaza in Santa Fe. Um, those trails are the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro National Historic Trail, the Old Spanish National Historic Trail, and the Santa Fe National Historic Trail. And I guess the question that most people want to know is, what, what is that? What, they may have heard of the trail as part of history, but not really understand what a National Historic Trail is. And the National Historic Trails were designated by Congress, so it requires an act of Congress. They're a permanent entity. They're administered by our office, which means not that the National Park Service owns or manages, like a national park unit, these trails, but we partner with essentially anyone who is um, in a position to further the purposes of National Historic Trail. And right here in Santa Fe, we've been doing a few things. We have a long way to go, um, but we're working towards our ultimate aim per the National Trail System Act, um, working with the city and uh, to a larger extent the county of Santa Fe, for example, extending the uh, river trail, which is a designated retracement route of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro um, that historically connected the capital of Mexico City with the original capital of Oquehuengue or San Juan de los Caballeros in 1598, that Oñate established, and then the Santa Fe when the capital was moved by the new governor, Peralta, in uh, 1609, 10. Um, so for that project, we're really creating a trail following the historic route as the act envisions. Um, and we were successful in getting Federal Lands Access Program money, partnering with the county and the city, the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service to extend 
the trail from the Camino Real trailhead that exists now that uh, constructed by the city of Santa Fe out to Diablo Canyon so that'll be about 15 miles of trail following the historic route of the Camino Real with interpretation so that, that's kind of the end game of what we try and do um, working with the partners to create the National Historic Trail make it a real entity something that the public can experience and um, take the pages out of the history book and make them real and relevant for the public, for the American public. Before we talk about you know the outdoor economy, which is something uh, that that uh, we're focused on here at the city and the county in, in building, uh, I know a lot of the uh, content of Outside Magazine over the years has focused on Mount Everest and the climbs that have been made, and with the recent uh, earthquakes in Tibet and the impact mm -hmm. uh, of those earthquakes on the mountain itself. What, what are some of your contacts telling you in terms of um, you know certainly one you know the state of, of where things are, and then two. Uh, just from, from an outdoor economy standpoint, which I think a lot of villages in the area really highly depend on, um, where do they go from here? Or what's, what's basically the, 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 the scene, if you will? As up far as Everest Mount Everest goes? goes. Yeah. Mount Everest is, is a really strange um, situation over there. It seems like every time there's a disaster, more people want to go over there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we found without, I mean, it, it, is, it is truly overcrowded on Everest and the more it costs to go over there the more people want to go over there the more people that die over there the more people want to go over there it's kind of now I don't know what's going to happen and nobody's really made any projections as to what the impact will be of the recent earthquake that took so many lives um, and and we had people over there covering that story uh, and it's been written about outside online if anybody's interested in, in catching up uh, with all the detail but nobody has really come out yet and, and had a, a, a really smart take on what this particular disaster is going to mean uh, in the Everest, in the Everest um, world over there. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It remains to be seen. And obviously we yeah. watch and, and hope that, you know, at least there's some uh, pathway to getting some normalcy for a lot of the, yeah. the local people there who, yeah. you know, obviously depend on the mountain and yeah. other means to to have a, their own yeah. healthy economies. Well, one of our own local climbers, Dave Hahn, who's summited Everest, I don't know, umpteen times, uh, lives in Taos. Uh, I believe, I haven't talked to Dave uh, since the earthquake, but I believe he was over there. Right. And um, I do, now that we're talking about it, I think I do want to call yeah, him up and see what's going on. Sure. Yeah. My name is Eric Ani. I represent the Santa Fe Metropolitan Planning Organization. The Santa Fe MPO is a federally funded organization. We're sponsored by the City of Santa Fe. Uh, our funding is geared towards transportation planning and the implementation of planning or transportation infrastructure here in the greater metro area. Uh, at least 27,000 reasons, but the, the key one is to keep the economy pumping, to move people safely through the um, town and then to provide options for those of us who need have different needs for transportation. It's a great question. In 2012 the MPO, which is the county, the city, and the state of New Mexico and the Pueblo of Tezuki got together and said, hey, we need to invest in bicycle infrastructure and policy. They put together a 2012 master plan that really focused on a few things in terms of infrastructure, education, and funding. And as a result, we support Bike to Work Week 100. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about the, uh, the uh, outdoor economy uh, here in, in New Mexico and, and certainly what it means for Santa Fe. Um, you know, obviously there is a need for us throughout New Mexico to uh, begin to, to restart our economy mm -hmm. uh, and to do it in ways that bring more capital into the state, create job opportunities. Uh, and one of the areas that's very natural has been uh, the outdoors in New Mexico. Of right. course, from the northern part of the state to the southern part, you can almost experience mm -hmm. any type of, of terrain uh, that, that exists, certainly in the Mountain West. Um, and over the course of time, it's, it's built itself up a little bit. Uh, there are estimates that the outdoor economy for New Mexico is about $2.75 billion uh, mm -hmm. dollars a year. Mm -hmm. 
and employs about 47,000 people um, in the state. But it seems like a, a real opportunity for growth uh, here in Santa Fe, and, and, and I think we're, we're working towards that effort. There's about 97 small businesses mm -hmm. in our city mm -hmm. and county that focus on outdoor activities. But as we, we look to the future in our city, and we want a more robust outdoor economy, what is, what is, what's your prescription for it? What are some of the things that you think we need to do to make that happen? Well, first of all, I, I would take a look at the macro picture and uh, the scale of uh, the outdoor industry um, is, is, is really enormous. Uh, it's almost two thirds of a trillion dollar business. It employs on a national level 6.1 million people. Uh, there are 38,000 companies in the core outdoor activities uh, scattered around the company, uh, around the country rather. And I think that in terms of uh, Santa Fe, even on a broader level, New Mexico, with all its natural resources, uh, all the unutilized space that we have, not that we want to crowd ourselves out by right. any means, Javier, but right. of course. Uh, I mean, just in terms of opportunities um, uh, and, and, and providing that the resources can support those opportunities, I think that um, a concentrated focus on bringing uh, attention, the attention uh, uh, of, the, of these natural resources to prospective companies, whether it's you know, from a headquarters point of view or whether it's from a new distribution center or no matter what the uh, needs of the market is when it relates to these 38,000 businesses, somewhere in there is enough new business opportunity for the state of New Mexico that with a concerted and concentrated effort should be very attractive uh, to businesses in the outdoor industry. And to bring a lot of that, uh, a lot of those uh, jobs, a lot of, the, a lot of that um, revenue, a lot of that economy. I mean, needless to say, every, every one of our you know, millions of, of online users and magazine readers and television viewers, they all know that outside is in Santa Fe. Right. And we're here for a reason. Right. You know, we love it here. We've found uh, an incredible home here. It's been just an, an amazing experience over the last two decades we've been here. Uh, and, you know, there's no reason why companies in our industry, our clients, uh, as well as our, you know, actual consumers, shouldn't spend more time here if they're a consumer. Mm -hmm. Come here, visit, enjoy yourself. You know, spend spend money in the local shops and restaurants and hotels and 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 especially since it's the outside bike and brew festival today and tomorrow and the next day. Uh, rent your bikes, take right. bike rides. We've got, as you said, we've got an incredible trail system here. It's getting better all the time. Incredible hiking trails. We've got our own very well kept secret in the uh, Santa Fe Ski Basin up there. We've got the Rio Grande, which is great, and, 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 and the, and the uh, uh, well, all the other uh, waterways that uh, are great for fishing. We've got a lot of fly fishermen over our headquarters, right. you might imagine. Um, so I, I think it's just a, about messaging, about getting the right message to a very targeted audience, and talk about the attributes, right. you know, and give them an incentive to come and visit us and get more details on why it's a good place to have a, have a business. business. And spend some time. I, would, uh, I think a lot of people uh, have this belief that the outdoor activities are just for the millennials or the, or the younger generation. And you and I had a chance to have uh, lunch a little bit early, earlier with groups that focus on promoting outdoor lifestyles mm -hmm. to, to the 60 plus uh, mm -hmm. range. And tell us a little bit about the profile of your readers. Does it, does it cover the whole uh, age spectrum? And if someone yeah. Yeah. Uh, is listening to us now and they they really haven't uh, been on the Dale Ball Trail or yeah. they've uh, purchased yeah. a bike to check out our bike trails and they're, you know, they're kind of up there, maybe mm -hmm. my age or whatever it might be. Yeah. You know, how, how do you, is, it, is it difficult to find your way in to an outdoor lifestyle? Uh, not at all. Um, it, we, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 of course, are big proponents of the lifestyle, needless to say. And uh, our demographic, um, while we have readers of all ages, when we're talking to, let's say, advertising agencies and they want to know, okay, what is the age of your readers, it is really 39 years old. 
Uh, they are professionals of all kinds. Uh, many are college, college graduates, but certainly not all of them. I mean, I think it's about 62% are college graduates or something like this. Yeah. Um, they, needless to say, they all participate in the active lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, if they're paying attention to, to outside. So um, it's, and it's a little different with the online audience. The online audience, as you might imagine, is a little younger, mm -hmm. but not by that much. I mean, you know, on average, We've got uh, you know we've got 12 year old kids and 80 year old 80 year old people. It breaks down you know to about a to about a 67 percent male to the balance being female oh. audience in terms of right. genders. Right. Although in the outdoor industry, kind of interesting, it's equally split: 50 percent women, 50 percent men oh. overall in the outdoor industry. Has that changed over time, or has it always been about the equal split? Uh, it has changed over time. Yeah. I mean, more women have just consistently poured into you know this active adventurous outside lifestyles we like mm -hmm. to call it so um yeah and they are they are great athletes by the way well and the hardware is kept up with the family lifestyle right i mean you, you can see yes. uh yeah. bikes that are made for Absolutely. families you, you, Absolutely. hiking uh apparatus Absolutely. that you can Absolutely. you can take your toddlers yeah. with so it's yeah. It's not meant just for single individuals. No. Or, you, there was a day right. when it was sort of all thought to be, you know, designed for, well, really for men. And then they, you know, the manufacturers and the marketers developed uh, through, you know, research and the natural evolution of, uh, of products and, and apparel and so forth. They, 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 it naturally evolved into, gee, we have to segment our product lines to address women, not just men. Women can't be expected to use everything that the men uses for a lot of, I guess, obvious reasons. Right. Then it went into children and in the, in the kids. I mean, uh, uh, probably 40, 48% of our, of our people have families with kids who are, you know, in high school. Yep. So, so the message is, you, you have kids at home, you, all of you can get out there and actually that's right. oh, enjoy the outdoor It's very much activity. a family thing. We have whole family sections in, that, we, uh, that we develop for, for outside platforms. Yep. I know one of the other areas that the magazine focuses on, and obviously you live it through your own lifestyle, is the health and wellness aspect to living a, an outdoor or having uh, part of your lifestyle uh, in the outdoors. Talk to us a little bit about the data that you're that you've seen in the magazine where uh, people who participate either in, in walking on trails or, or getting on a bike or um, you know, getting onto the river. What, from a health and wellness standpoint, uh, we know uh, it, 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 it helps our quality of life out, but what, what does it do from that perspective? Well, I, I think, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of research uh, on this and, and uh, you know, it, it depends if you're talking about the extremes or you're talking about yeah. your average, you know, weekend warrior. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly huge focus um, in our body work uh, department at the magazine and online. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, talking about nutrition, talking about um, regimen for getting in shape to do things outside so that you're in uh, good enough physical condition to really enjoy these And that's probably activities. a good message right there, right? You don't necessarily want to go climb out Delia tomorrow if you haven't climbed the mountain your whole life, right? I mean, you've got to You've got to work. You've yeah, got to condition yourself. Uh, absolutely. I mean, everything you know, everything re really comes back to you know some sort of physical conditioning, um, nutritional mm -hmm. uh, programs that help that uh, physical conditioning um, be optimized. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 just all part of the lifestyle. I think that you'll find you know people that spend. Um, you go to the you go to the outdoor retailer show in Salt Lake City either the winter show or the summer show. Mm -hmm. And you, you, I mean, the difference between going to that show and going to many other business conventions is, is night and day. I, I mean, the people look so healthy. You know, I mean, they're everything from their skin tone to their, to their physical makeup. I mean, it just says a lot about living an active outside lifestyle. So let's talk a little bit as, as we get ready to finish up about uh, the uh, Outside Bike and Brew Festival that you decided to uh, sponsor last year. Uh, I know Outside participates in community events all over the world. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about why it's a, a bike and brew. I, I know the brew side of it, and I'm glad of it. 
But uh, uh, Outside Magazine uh, did uh, rank Santa Fe kind of at number two, I think, in 2014 is, right. is being one of the best uh, right. cities where there are good running trails. Exactly. But uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about the, what the Bike and Brew brand under Outside Magazine and, and what your hopes are, uh, not only for the event this year, but, but moving into yeah. the future to, yeah. to people yeah. who are looking to participate. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, um, actually, the, uh, the idea of the Bike and Brew was brought to me by Chris Goblet, uh, who um, represents the New Mexico Beer Association, uh, and he had this idea about putting together uh, with biking, and so he, uh, uh, we had a meeting with him, and I loved the idea. Uh, needless to say, as we've already discussed, our offices are right there, and the rail yard, rail yard is right here. So. Uh, it was kind of a nice homegrown idea as yeah. well as being, you know, very, very uh, close to the outside staff, which, you know, they got excited about. So, yeah, we, we decided that, um, you know, we could help bring this thing to, a, to an international audience, really. I mean, last year we only had three months to put it together, and uh, we had 8,000 people. Uh, Early on, we were thinking that we'd probably get 15,000 people here. I don't know if the rain's going to influence that or not, but um, that was Chris's projection uh, earlier uh, in the year. Uh, we'll see what the numbers turn out to be. But we've got an opportunity to really bring this to the attention, you know, through uh, uh, both our local advertising program, but in Outside's case, to a national audience. And we've got people who, are, who, who actually call us up to reserve bicycles coming from New York right. uh, and Puerto Rico. Right. We, yeah, so so we're, we're out there bringing these, um, bringing these people into Santa Fe uh, to experience, in many cases for the first time, to experience it in a really exciting way. Uh, obviously, we've got seven bands uh, that are going to be active over the weekend. We've got tons of bike riding for all levels of bike riding from, you know, the, almost a professional level. and. And, and the Century 100 road biking, and and your city tours on bikes, the chocolate tour, the brewery tour, the restaurant tour. I mean, there are dinners and films. I mean, this is really a full program, and uh, we're just very proud at Outside to be a part of it. Well, uh, just want to say thank you for it, because I, uh, it is a, a fun event, and it helps, I, I think in many respects, uh, broaden um, reasons why to come to Santa Fe, in addition to seeing uh, all the art and culture and experiencing the great culinary, uh, we've given people another exciting reason to come to Santa Fe, and that's to not only uh, taste some great micro, micro beer, but also to enjoy some incredible uh, trails that are out there. I also just want to say thank you to you and Gabe, uh, certainly for your personal involvement in our community. You, you dedicate uh, lots of resources to supporting uh, nonprofits, environmental causes, I know are important to you. Uh, your employees, I know, are, are encouraged to, to participate in the community and to volunteer. Uh, we see outside employees all over the place. They're, they're in our schools. They're, they're part of our nonprofit structure. And I think that that really um, is, a, is a sign of your personal um, statement that you're a Santa Fe fan. Um, yep. Your company is, is a Santa Fe company. And, uh, you know, you, you love telling the world that you're in Santa Fe. We do indeed. Yeah. So on behalf of Santa Fe, I just want to say cheers. Thank you for uh, sponsoring this event, and thank you for being in Santa Fe. My pleasure being with you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, it's a pleasure to be in Santa Fe, no doubt about it. Salud. Salud. All right, so thank you for uh, listening to us. I'm with uh, Larry Burke, the CEO of Outside Magazine, uh, and we're talking about the Bike and Brew uh, Festival, the second annual one here in Santa Fe. Um, the second, but we know there will be many more to come, and we're looking forward to this weekend and certainly uh, next year's event as well.